All right, Steiny Guru with you, and this is the crossover with Mark Willard and Dan Dibley. What a what a throw. Ask more like it. Ask more like it. What a throw. Listen to you. <laughs> How about Wilt? <laughs> yeah, three points. Oh, they look great. They the, the defense, the defense was absolutely five sacks, four fantastic. Ten quarterback hits. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And again, from a personnel standpoint. It didn't make sense that they don't look like that all the time. And I don't know, you know, time will tell if that's just Chase Young, rest. I don't know, but that's more like it. Man. That's what that shit group should look like. And if they look like that, all is for Dibs, they started the game with uh, the 5D linemen like if Minnesota and Cleveland yeah. did to them. They came out with like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you hate to um, see it. <laughs> yeah. Other one, other one. Yeah, I got one. there it is. Yeah. Other one, there it is. Uh, how about we give credit to Steve Wilkes no, for no, a minute? I mean, not? we bury him all week, all by week. Yeah. And how about Steve Wilkes made the adjustment? And how about he figured out how to unlock this defensive line? Yeah. Let's start there. Uh, Bo said your boy in the A-gap, <laughs> so he was moving him around. Yeah, Bosa yeah. moved inside. They went 5-D linemen. They mixed it up. The first possession on defense, they Man. went 5-D they went line. They went three linebackers base. They went two linebackers in, in the nickel. They Amber mixed Thomas, it up. Yeah. switch him and Lenore. And I you mean, can see Trevor Lawrence was confused. They had the 10 gate. on the line in one play. <laughs> Trevor. Trevor. I mean, like, well, well, go ahead, I, I'm, I'm not going to come after Trevor Lawrence. That You know, again. Well, dude, block somebody. Well, wait, His O-line blocked no one. Right, right. But, uh, you know, some of the decisions, even the, the, the Hufanga pick where he hucked the, you know, he hucked a 90-mile-an-hour fastball well, at, uh, at his running back who was four feet away from him. Trevor, uh, Richard, football. Richard Sherman came after Trevor Lawrence pretty hard I missed, on, I got on, on, on Twitter no, last okay. night. Yeah, he, he said he's just like this generational talent. You know, it hasn't measured up. They're winning because their defense creates turnovers. It was an interesting take. I, I really like Trevor Lawrence, but he never had a shot yesterday. Okay, he real quick before you go, Steiny. Him and I talked about why Vegas was not buying into Jacksonville to the point of where they were favored. They were not favored in this game, even though the Niners were on a skid. But nobody knew Jacksonville. I never had them in the Niners category from the gate. And that's why the Niners were minus three and a half. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people and, can. And, and, yeah. It was, and it was the most bet favorite of the entire yeah. weekend in the NFL. <laughs> Guru now, two and yeah, two. I didn't think you did. Two and yeah. two with your locks. So let's, the, let's keep it honest. The, uh, the, the whatchamacallit, the Sharps. Yeah, the, the Sharps. The Sharps felt like they knew. Okay. And they were right this particular time. They're not always right, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, this like Jacksonville, I think Jacksonville's a very, very good football team. They're somewhere in that, like... I don't even call them one A. Like they're in the next group. Yeah, because they, they made the playoffs. They're not. Yeah. Well, no, they're they're, they're going to win that division. I still think. Now Houston's interesting, but they are. But but you know when, when we talk about the Philly and the Niners and the KCs, Jacksonville's not that. They're in the next group. It's a hell of a win. Thirty-one point win in their house off of a buy for them too. Man, I got, that was really good, really good stuff. I, I have yesterday. a question, and maybe maybe it's all because of where the money comes in, but. I, and I'll. Why were the Niners favored by three and a half? Okay, so Jacksonville's won five in a row. Maybe maybe the Sharps realize that Jacksonville winning five and the 49ers losing three favors the the Niners because they'll have more sense of urgency. What, what I'm getting at is, well, what if the Niners had were were four and four? Let's say they started four and zero. Oh. And we're four and four. Do you think the line would still have been three and a half? Yes. What about yeah. if they'd won three in a row? <laughs> no, seriously. Like, well, I don't, I'm trying that, to tell. I, I I'm asking somebody to explain it. No, to but me. it's it's more circumstantial than than what you're. I think what you're saying, like as if well, the records are this, and this is the streak they're on. It's it's circumstantial. They're they're bringing into account well, a like they're they're always ahead. Vegas is always ahead on injury news. So maybe Vegas is is setting that number going, Debo and Trent are back. Um, both teams are rested. Who does that help more? And then somewhere along the line, it whittles down to what the Sharps think is just the better team. And, and, and I don't think anybody, even with well. the circumstances, going into yesterday's game would have thought Jacksonville's the better team. We would have thought if everyone plays their best, Niners win, right? 
I, wouldn't, wouldn't we have all thought that, even with the circumstances? No doubt. Yeah. So I, I, think, I think that's where it comes from. I Yeah, I'm just curious. Like, what, what would have had to happen leading up to that game? I guess, what was there going to be any circumstances where uh, Jacksonville was a fa- What if Jacksonville was undefeated coming into that game? Well, like I mean, I, then they'd be a different team than they are. But they're, they were 6-2. Yeah, they're well, good. I, I, yeah, they're I guess, good. what's the delineation there? The origin is before the season. To but, that, okay, that but that's all I'm saying. Okay. If it's before the season, to me, that, that means that's, that's a lot of what. It ain't mm. all they won. They're cute. They won four in a row. It's like, who are they really? Okay, and the Niners okay. Were supposed how about to- this? How about this? If the Niners, next week they're playing Tampa Bay. Yeah. I don't know. What's the line right now? Ten and, now? and a half. Oh, my God. It's yeah. ten and a half. What if the Boy. Niners would have lost yesterday? Would that still be a ten and a half point spread? No. Probably be seven and a half. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I'm just curious. I don't, I, you know. Well, you look at Jacksonville and you look at the home field advantage that we always say is three points. Well, it's not three points when half the crowd is Niner fans. So you is take, that part of it? I think so. Yeah. And you look at uh, Jacksonville six wins and you look at two wins in England, one of which was completely hokey mm, yeah. in that they got to okay. stay. And was it Buffalo, Mark, it who Buffalo. came in the second oh, half? Yeah. So they had a two-game homestand in Europe, yeah. and they had a, a humongous advantage, and they beat Buffalo. So their 6-2 right. and two is a little inflated based on their their European stay. And the Niners off a bye, probably better than Jacksonville off a bye. And so you look at all that, and that kind of mitigates the 10 a.m. factor, which is what you know Mark said last right. week, where normally a 10 a.m. game is tough because – your whole week lead up is going to be a little bit more difficult, but off a of bye, you're coming off the couch. Or, or off the offseason, right, which was right. their other 10 a.m. game mm. this year, and they looked fantastic in that one True. as well. So, yeah, I, I just the word that keeps popping in my mind when you ask these questions, Donnie, is circumstance. And it's what I think Vegas does better, and it's why Vegas builds houses and we, and casinos. we, and we pay for oh, them. That's what you mean. It's, yeah. why, it's why they do that is because they understand – the, the intricate circumstances, they've got people inside the buildings who are telling them, hey, here's what the outside world doesn't know about our situation right now. And, and you know, I, maybe it's just Trent and Debo, or maybe there is some sort of a fatigue factor. Maybe there was an adjustment they made during the buy, what have you. I think Vegas knows these things, and that's why sometimes when you see these spreads and you're like, why the hell is that the spread? And then the game plays out, and you go, "Oh, that, that that's why the spread was was what it was." You know, these things that look like they should be easy, and uh, and they're not. Like, wh- why did Joe Burrow look like that yesterday? I don't know. Cincinnati had gone through, but D'Amico the- Ryan's got his unit playing. Yeah, although it's not like the Bengals didn't score a bunch of points. They scored a well, bunch of points. One guy dropped a touchdown to give him to win he the game. He did, and that would have won the game. Yeah, that would have won the game. <laughs> but Tyler they do Boyd. drop them, but, Yep, yep. It, it happens. But, every, you know, Baltimore. Look at Baltimore yesterday. Where it was They had a week of, hey, maybe they're the best team and in the, the NFL. And the guy doing the Niner game goes, that's the best team in the NFL. I want <laughs> to say, no, check he the said score. it, here come the wow. Browns. Big win for Deshaun Watson. So, you know, like there's really maybe only one team in the NFL this year who hasn't shown some sort of at least like a two-week period of warts. Mm. And it's the Eagles. And uh, we're about to find out on the Eagles because they go Chiefs, Bills, Niners, Cowboys. And that's Monday night. That's yeah. right. That's right. They, that's their next four weeks. And if they can do that, even three and one, I'll bow down and say yeah. you, you're the clear uh, regular season best team in football. The 49ers are the fourth team of that group? Third. Third. Gotcha. They start at Arrowhead next Monday night, a week from tonight. Go through them again? Chiefs at Arrowhead, home to Buffalo, home to the 49ers at Dallas. And if you want a cherry on top, they're at Seattle the following I mean, week. man. Well, it's a hell of a run. It's a hell of a gauntlet. But yep. they have already been in a bit of a mini gauntlet. Miami, <laughs> Washington, Dallas, and they're 3-0 in, in, that, in that run since their loss to the Jets. So, you know, they've got the crown right now, and that's fine, but... I, I like if I'm the Niners, I'm not giving up on the one seed at all. Philly loses next week yeah. at, at Kansas City. 
boom, it's right back in the Niners' hands. Exactly. And, and acknowledge that Detroit is there, too. Sure. Niners are more fixated on winning the West right now than they are for the sure. number one seed. For sure. Big win you for know. Seattle. Yeah. I was thinking this is going to be a perfect weekend for the Niners. And then you got Seattle twice in the next, uh, what, four games? four games? Yeah, yeah. You, you got Tampa, Philly, Seattle twice, so... You're not really worried about the one seed. You're worried about trying to beat Tampa, and you should beat Tampa at home. But this whole thing, as we have to rediscover every year, the NFL is about matchups. Because wow. you watched Dallas yesterday, and I know you did. Yeah. Dallas looks like the best team in the history of the NFL. And then you realize, oh, my God, they played the Giants. No doubt. And then you remember Dallas against the Niners, and it was completely reverse flip mode squad. You got me all in check. Woo-ha, <laughs> woo-ha. Thank you, too. Thank you. I'll take it. It's Monday. And it was a completely different game. The Niners were Dallas, and yeah. Dallas was the that, Giants. So amazing. Not just the Giants, though. The Giants were a quarterback who's still living with mom. That's, I mean, like... DeVito, sir. That, Daddy what, DeVito. what was the spread in that game? 17? 17 and a half. I took it. I took it. Good, good, good play. Good play. You didn't so. go reverse devil tongue? Nah, that was one of them. Okay. They're, yeah. Oh, you're, oh, go ahead, sir. You're listening to 95.7 <laughs> The Game. KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. I'm a issue, Willard, you don't like this, but it's to a player. I'm issuing an apology. And the apology goes to Debo Samuel. And the reason is Debo Samuel is I got caught up in this Niner offense. And the fact that McCaffrey was a still MVP candidate to where these words came out of my mouth, partner. I said, you know what? Thinking about the future, Debo might be expendable. But I believe Man. a quarterback's best friend <laughs> and what a coach wants on his chessboard is what Debo provides. And the first umpteen plays, Debo's in motion. That means the backside of a defense has to account for that. It's a reason. And, and per- I would give you three. Purdy didn't have that for three weeks, man. That is a weapon in itself. No doubt. So Debo just being the silhouette of Debo means something. And McCaffrey had more room. Not that he ran for 300, but you could just tell they missed just the thought or threat of well, 19. I'll take, yeah. I'll take you before the plays even get called. I mean, I, I hadn't thought of this very much. And I don't want to be all, you know, this isn't supposed to be like rah-rah. But Debo and Trent are the two who lead this team onto the field, and 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 that that Need boom something? that boombox situation <laughs> is is worth something. It's not worth a touchdown, but I just think that those <laughs> those guys mean something to this offense. It doesn't mean that if they're not there, you just give them a pass and it's like okay, we can't even function. No, it doesn't get to work that way. But I hadn't thought of the fact. I was thinking about it from X's and O's, and I hadn't thought about it in terms of 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 just what's in between. Jimmy's and Joe's, yeah, in between That's the rib cage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. Those are the guys that lead you out onto the field. And, and I thought coming off of a bye, and and Chase Young getting he in, was in front injected with yeah. into that situation. He said he had never experienced anything like that in his career, and so I just think wow. energetically, for whatever that's worth. The Niners came out absolutely on point, and uh, and they needed to. They needed to. A very very pivotal weekend for them. Any issue, you guys, with uh, Mc- McCaffrey coming back into the game with six minutes to go? What do you think, Dibs? No, no, no. I mean, no problem as long as you don't get hurt. I mean, if you get hurt, then uh, I have a you. problem with you. I, yeah, but I thought the same thing. What was the point? Well, to trying, break the record, right? It meant something so, to him and the team. Sure. Yes, about here's, here's and what yet fun. they go to use check. I mean, the use check yeah, touchdown right. already happened. Uh, so we're going to get McCaffrey the ball because we want to break some record. It's not like we're trying to break DiMaggio's record. This is a record that's not. I mean, but to them, and it was that though. Obviously, then get him a touchdown earlier. Yeah, Evan said Kittle should have went down at the one yard line. I mean, line. You, right. don't play the no, game. No, thanks. Play the game. Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? Ball. Like that—that that was right out of the gate in the second half. That that game was not uh, not not in hand as of yet. So uh, here here's what sort of got me about it though, because I, I noticed it and I forgot. I forgot it was the record because at first I'm like, what the hell is he doing in the game? And then it was like broadcast takes over. It's like, oh, they're trying to get him to talk. Oh, right, the record. So then you go through the emotion of, okay, like you said, Debs, what if he gets hurt? Then then you're really opening yourself up for criticism. Right. But, if he obviously, does, but if it mattered to him, he really wanted to go out there, okay, so there's that conversation. But what about here's what actually bugged me about it. What bugged me about it is you're taking injury risk 
And in a way, to me, the record really only means everything it could mean if it happens within the framework Natural. of playing the actual okay. game. All right. So in other words, Strahan sack record. I brought well, that up. Far, if wow. you fall over I on purpose. I brought it up, Stiney. Tell him you it's, heard it. it. It's not that it doesn't count, and this would have counted too, but it wouldn't have Some counted. Some people remember. Yeah, it wouldn't have counted yeah. the same way. Cal like, Ripken Jr., the only reason why that record exists is because they flooded their own field. I know. I so know. if you want to talk about like rec- records of records, but we br- you just brought it up, so things like right. I'm not saying it but wouldn't this count. Rec- I'm going to say that this record is not really. I mean, it's a record, sure, but we can pull anything out of the ether and say, oh, most most field goals from 40 to 42 yards consecutively made. But what about it's, it's a record? That, what about the relationship? Don't you think uh, McCaffrey respects Kyle for putting him out there trying to do a solid sure, form? Sure, That's what, like, I was but trying to tell Stein that. Would he that. turn against Shanahan if he didn't put him back out there? Would he be like, uh, all right, no, Kyle, uh, you're dead to me? He had his chances. He got the ball. Now, he didn't get the ball as much as he normally does, but it's football, and you had other things working. So, I don't know. To me, if you're talking about a real record, he's like, like you're going to break the rushing record. Or you're going to break the catches record. Or you're going to break like a real record, like most touchdowns in a year. It's been you'll, around you'll, forever. You'll remember okay. this. You'll remember this. It, w- was it was it Shamiqua Holtzclaw? Who was the person in women's basketball, collegiate? University books? of Tennessee. She was going to be the all-time scorer, and then she like... ACL. Tore, ACL. Yeah. ACL. So what'd they do? The next game out, they all like left the court. They limped her out and there. And limped her out there and let her put a bucket in. Now... Do you get the record? You get the record. I'm not here to be Does captain. She get the record? Yeah, I'm not here to be captain cynical about this, but the no, record, I like, I like the this. record I like this, Mark feels better yeah. if it's within so, the framework of saying. what we're here doing. Not some like, okay, let's all go out there to get the record. Like, wait Feel a minute. Feel kind of dirty. I'm going to just Google yeah. who it was. I, I'm was hoping it, it was, was it Shem- Shemequa? I thought it might have been Diana Taurasi, but <sighs> I'm going to yeah, Google it. Was one it. of them. I'm going to pull it. And is, yeah. is that the record all time scoring in, I think in so. women's in basketball? A career, yeah. In, yeah. In a collegiate. Career. Yeah. And it, I'm with you in terms of that. But for me, this McCaffrey record, sure, it's a record. But And if he wanted to break the record, then go ahead and go back out there. But everything is risk reward. Stein is a golfer. If you hit a tee shot and you have to hit your second shot over water on a par five to try to reach the green and you're not sure if you can do it, and like the, the 14th hole at, uh, at Metro with the big, uh, the big chasm, yep. I can't hit my drive far enough anymore to really comfortably get over. So sometimes you got to lay up, and sometimes you have to take a player off the field and say, you know what, we're up by five touchdowns. You don't get a chance to get the record, son. Uh, Nikisha Sales. Oh, there you uh, go. That, Nikisha Sales. Oh, Connecticut. Yeah. Also yeah. UConn. Yep, yep. I had the right school, and, wrong and, player. And wrong injury. Achilles, not ACL. That's same thing. Whatever, right? Same two. Yeah. Uh, uncontested basket during a game at Villanova on Tuesday night so she could break her college's, I guess it was just UConn. UConn. Gotcha. UConn scoring. And record. if you watch the replay, she actually travels on the play. <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. look at my guy. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know. Oh, yeah. Amazing trying with that been a thing. Called it. <laughs> <laughs> Wave it off. We're going the other way. Oh, my God. That's yeah. so funny. So, Nikisha Sales. Okay. That's what I'm thinking of. And not even a, a uh, NCAA record, just a school just a record. UConn, okay. Just a UConn record. Yeah. Yep. I mean. Yep. Well, uh, you know. Willa, can you do me a, a favor? Always. Uh, get Curry some help. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we saw each other, everything Dude, what, what was. What about the Splash Brothers? Was he, his brother, he's in a contract year. And no, he needs to go back to playing the way he plays. I appreciate he's trying to do the right thing. This ain't this ain't this. Ain't, Wait, what do you mean by that? They got him in a straight jacket. And, oh, Clay's playing the so right way. So you want him to start gunning again? Well, I mean, if, if, if you got a, something, New Jack City. I don't know, man. That's I'm, a four. Like, Thank I, you. I don't give me an answer. And Wiggins, Dre's outscoring you. Yeah, Dre that's... getting thrown out, fighting everybody in the I gym. I don't think like like do we need the Warriors to have someone who scores north of twenty just, no, just because... help or hit a shot? Yeah, more. right. Forty percent right. collectively that as can a be, team that, at home. That that can be anybody. 
That can be anybody. That doesn't. Will need to it be. be? So this is just a man. If only you had a young, a young score <laughs> yeah, where you could just put I in. Knew, a, I knew that's where hey, this was. If happening. it could get to the free throw line. in a world where yeah. you could have a young player who could oh. actually get you buckets in a day when nobody else can get mm-hmm. buckets, turns, man. Turns out he's only averaging seventeen a game too. So I mean, what about yeah. Draymond Green about seventeen a game on a replay that they didn't go replay? They replayed something else and they said, "Oh foul, we can go back." You fouled him. You're out of that here. Was, that was that was. I've odd. never seen. Did you that. know that, Dibs? Uh, did you know that? Draymond's I did not know that. Saturday. Okay, but when I saw it and I saw it all play out, I oh. thought, you know what? Uh-oh. Good for you, officials. That's a dirty play. He straight up pushes no, a guy I'm... in the back, Guru. Yeah. If somebody does that to you, no doubt, man. In the Yoon outdoor. <laughs> Imagine this. Yeah. You're off of Mission Boulevard, somewhere down there, past Hesperian. Gotcha. I'm you not, you, yeah. yeah, and you know, you're, we're playing. It's nine eight, and you go down for a I layup, get that. and some individual two hand shoves you in the back. But the and you way that spill they found the out structure? about it, Dibs, I'm talking about the zebras. <laughs> that, that was, was all wrong. Within, no, it wasn't structure. wrong. It was in the rules. If you go to replay and something presents itself, then. That was I incredible. Didn't, I didn't it's not know like they made up a rule. Oh, no, but, I'm not saying but they But you know did. what? You know what's what's but interesting here, it. though? Yeah, to, to, I think we all knew <laughs> that you injected. could you could see something that developed on a previous play, but a technical is a judgment call. It's not oh. just like a shove in the back is automatically a technical. A shove in the back is a foul. Sometimes it's a technical. Like right. there's there's right. something and they knew he had one. Right. There's something involved with a ref where they're like. You know, there's a buildup for a technical. Like, I've had it, and I've warned you, and so now it's a technical. His first one. So, that. right, right. So to 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 do that after oh, the fact boy. feels a little funny because it's like, well, but a tech has to happen in the moment. That has to be like, you've had your moment, yeah. you've had your warning, now I'm teeing you up. So, it doesn't, that, but yeah. it doesn't yeah. have to happen in the moment. No, it really doesn't. There's no rule, obviously. Right. But but to say, hey, I saw a technical on tape is making it sound like you saw a bug fly across the screen. Mm. It's not a fact. It's 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 an emotional response. And so I to see well, that it's on a judgment call. Right. And but when you look at it on that's tape, that's odd. Now that would get that's odd to but me. That's odd. I I didn't find it that odd when I saw it on tape because. Uh, that player was nowhere near the play, and the backstory. Blah, 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 you realize what happened about I don't know ninety yeah. seconds before, sure. Sure, where sure. you know Donovan Mitchell got to him, and so now in the very next play, I'm gonna push you in the back, two hands, uh. and shove you toward the baseline. To me, it was pretty obvious. It's it was a pretty easy call. I mean, you know, and I I'm the same. As I've been for the last couple of years, it's like, oh, did was that fair? Did Draymond deserve it? Doesn't matter anymore. He got thrown out of a game. He got thrown out of another game. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, and but but this is like <laughs> this is kind of what I mean about oh, everything's fine this year. Everything all Jordan Poole. All right, well, Dre did the same thing he does four times a year on Saturday, and you know what? Last night. I was there. Yeah. Last night he's getting Willard. What you get? Last night he about turned it? on. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, he, did. he turned him on. It's just like, I don't know. I'm not and mad at him. I'm not team, mad at him. And, but what you going to do about it? But he's just, he's, uh, he's and got some turned good. On he's got some good and he's got some bad. No, he's, every he's single the boy. game. He's the most classic athlete. Of, Tell me. Can't live with him, but even more so can't live Man, him without him. 400. Than I've, ever, than I've ever, ever seen in my lifetime of watching sports. Wow. Um, you're 100% right. You're going to have to live with all kinds of stuff you don't like. Last year was the best example of that that we've seen in his career. Um, and the power that he has is he just smiles and knows, but you can't live without me even yeah. more. You put that to IG. Yep. He got a post. four-year deal for $100 yep. million. Yeah, that's the one thing I can't keep, live without him. Right? I keep looking. Like I kept watching that game last night. Not that he was bad, but I was like four more years. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Tremendous. We'll be listening. Yeah. Have a great show, and we'll see you tomorrow.